affiliate with Google Ads, you need to be targeting your ideal audience. And in this video, I'm gonna show you three different ways you can implement right now to start targeting your perfect audience with Google Ads right away. Now, all of these three methods are tried and tested. I've done it across 100 different e-commerce brands so far just this year alone because I run a Google Ads agency and I work with some of the biggest brands in the world. But the first way I found to target your ideal audience is one of the easiest ways and that's simply by tweaking your custom product characteristics section. Now, you can have this done directly within the Google Merchant Center. You can also have this done with an app like Simprosis right over here. But the key thing you want to be doing is providing information for the three following sections. Section number one is the Google product category. Section number two is the custom attribute section. And section number three is the detailed product characteristics section. These three, you can think of as the holy grail of targeting because at any given time, the algorithm has basically zero clue besides your product titles, besides your product descriptions, what your product is, how it helps, who the right audience is, etc. And when you go into the back end and when you change these three categories and these three sections specifically, that's when you start really communicating with the internal algorithm. That's when you really start telling it exactly which way to go about this. First things first, with the Google product category, you want to first of all make sure you're choosing the specific category which is the most closely resembling what you are trying to sell. So here for this brand, we're trying to sell a foam muscle roller, which is for the back specific. But as you can see, the category we have chosen here, it's not just sporting goods, it's not just exercise and fitness. I went in and specifically found foam rollers, and that's as narrow as it can be. Now, if foam rollers was not available, then of course it would have to be a little bit broader than that, but generally you want to be going as narrow as possible. Go as subcategory as you can. If you're selling, for example, pet supplies like a cat litter box, for example, then you want to go after cat litter specifically, not just cat supplies, because the narrower you get, the better the idea the algorithm has of who your ideal audience is, who to go after, etc. And this is one of the easiest ways to kind of guide the algorithm in the right direction, tell it exactly what to do. But that's not the only way. Now moving on to custom attributes, we have a lot of different items we can add in here, such as the color of the product, the material, the cost of the goods, the size of the product, the pattern. The key goal here is to submit information for these four at the top. You don't necessarily have to write anything for cost of goods, but the color, material, size, pattern, those are very important, especially if they matter in the buying decision of your product. But you don't want to just go in and add in random information here. What you want to do is you want to go on Google and type in the main keyword for your product. And from there, you want to go into the left-hand side right here to understand what information is already provided by these other brands. So for instance, if we look right here for the color, there's black, blue, green, gray. And if we click see more, there's a whole bunch of other colors. You want it to be choosing a color specifically, which is already within these categories, because that's going to give Google an easier time of categorizing your products. Because if you give a color here, which is not already available here, for example, you tell it that there's the color violet or something and it's not there. What's going to happen is Google is going to have trouble adding that specific color in. And as a result, it may never be added in here. So to avoid that, make sure to add in any information which is already available here. And again, it's the same for everything. So material, size, pattern, whatever information you see here, for example, you can add that within the back end as well. It's, it's going to, first of all, make it so that when somebody checks a box here and your brand has a higher chance of appearing here just for that given feature, that given color, etc. But the third thing you wanna be focused on is the detailed product characteristic. Now, this is fairly straightforward. The size, if there's any types of sizing, size types, unit pricing measure, the condition, age group, whatever you can submit here is what you need to add. So for example, if this product has no type of gender or social with it instead of just leaving it blank i always say it's better to choose an actual gender like unisex for example, if there is, again, no gender associated with the same thing for age group, you can change it to adult versus kids. In most situations, you can get away with just choosing adult unless, of course, your product is for kids, infants, etc. But providing as much information here, the key you want to keep in mind is be as narrow as possible. Because when your ads go out into the audience pool and try to find the right kind of audience for your product, what's going to happen is they're already going to go after a broad audience. And when you have some things provided in the back end, which are all narrow, it makes the algorithm's life easier. It makes it easier to find the ideal audience. But this now brings us to the second way of targeting your ideal audience with Google Ads. And this is through 
audience signals and search themes. Now, this can be done directly within a performance map CMS, which is one of the most common campaigns most brands use. Also, the campaign apps that we mostly use to scale brands are my agency, which if you run a brand doing a million dollars a year, you need an extra help scaling your brand to the next level. Go on to my website at euromarketing.com and schedule a free call with me and let's see if we can potentially work together and make that happen. But audience signals and search themes are a blessing in disguise for performance max campaigns if you use them the right way. Now, what do most brands do? Most brands come in here with search themes. They start adding a bunch of keywords in here. For example, if we were selling that foam roller, they would just type in foam roller, for example. They might type in back pain. They might type in some other types of remedies or some other types of solutions like solution for back pain, etc. And although these are ideal, these can help they are not direct enough, they're not narrow enough, nor are they following any type of strategy. So you want to always avoid just adding a bunch of keywords in here, which don't really uh -huh. go after your perfect customer or your perfect audience. So the best approach when it comes to search themes is as it says right here, what are some words or phrases people use when searching for your products? You wanna be as narrow as possible. Now is not the time with search themes to go broad. The algorithm will do that on its own. The search theme section is basically a section where you have to go in as narrow as possible. The best way to find this specific keyword is to actually go to the inside section. If you already have some level of scale, if you already have some data coming in, go to the inside section, go to the last 28 days worth of data. And from here, you should be given a bunch of different keywords, which you can actually add within the search theme section. These are all keywords which have already gotten sales. You don't have to do any guesswork here. Simply go in here, choose the specific products or keywords that this campaign sells. And then from there, just copy and paste those keywords into the back end, into the search theme section. It's as simple as that. But that's only for the search theme side of thing. Now, you want to understand that search themes and audience signals, they go hand in hand. You can't have one and leave out the other. The audience signal section is one where you have to, again, be as narrow as possible. But in this situation, there's no sorts of keywords or anything similar to that which you are providing. So instead, we're providing in a specific list of audiences, which our campaign should mimic. It's like a lookalike audience if you use Facebook ads. Basically, we're telling the algorithm to go out and find people who are similar to those within this audience. So naturally, what that means is you want the highest quality audience possible within this list. People such as those already purchased those who initiated checkout those who added to cart etc these three are the main audiences that you would want to go after but in addition to that you can also go after some other interests and detailed demographics like we did here it's like a custom interest but also in market segments which are very specific to your brand now in this situation we were able to find some in market segments which go after this specific product and category in general which is why we chose that here but whatever you can find here which is as specific as possible again that's what you want to be choosing you stay away from the broad kind of approaches here and that brings me to the third way to target your ideal audience and that is through content exclusions now this is one of the most commonly missed sections because most brands don't even know about this. But basically, if you go in on your Google Ads dashboard, just at the very top, just type in content suitability, you'll see that it goes to tools and content suitability. You want to click on that, which will take you to this page right here. So from here, there's only a few things you need to do in order to target your ideal audience. And that is, first of all, to exclude sensitive content. Keep in mind, somebody who's watching tragedy and conflict or sensitive social issues or anything else that's mentioned here, they're not really in the buying intent mood. They're not going to be going after trying to purchase your product that you sell when they're looking at a specific thing like this because they're in a negative mindset on its own. And this is what you want to avoid. You don't, you want to capture essentially people who are in a buying intent or in a buying mood, not those who have just seen some kind of bad video or bad conflict arise. So this is the first thing that will help with the targeting side of things. It will completely get rid of the bad pool of the audience. But we're not done here yet. You want to go down to the excluded placements. And basically, you want to exclude all these app categories right here, both from the Apple App Store as well as the Google Play Store right here. And it's super important because what is happening happening is essentially if you run performance mass campaigns, your PBX campaigns, especially if you had asset groups in, are going after all of these app placements, apps related to books, 
music and audio, medical, etc. And that's the last placement you want to be on because when somebody's listening to music, for example, if somebody's watching some kind of video or they're reading the news or whatever it may be, they're not in a buying intent. There's going to be a very, very low chance that this person will stop what they're doing, click on your ad that comes up on their phone and then purchase from you. So it's basically done to avoid any types of overspending and avoid any types of inefficiency because that's what these apps do essentially and excluding them is the best way to go because this now frees up hard drive and algorithm space so it can go after the right kind of placements and categories which is essential to growing your brand when it comes to google ads but if you don't run a brand doing a million dollars a year you need extra help scaling to the next level again go to my website at schedule a pre-call with me and let's see if we can potentially work together and make that happen